Hi guys, John here. This video today is going to be an update video on my Aqua One Mini Reef 120. Uh, a few guys that have been following me, uh, or, or you haven't been following me, this tank has been up and running for just over a year now. Um, nearly a year and a half, uh, about another three months for a year and a half. And uh, everything's been going great. There's been a couple of changes from my last video uh, that everyone has been... Uh, or a couple of people have asked me through Facebook or to do a little bit more uh, video on or maybe show off some of the new things I've gotten because they've seen on my Facebook page and uh, I'll go into that. A uh, few guys that don't know uh, what type of coral and stock list I have in this tank or for even everyone that just wants a bit of an update, I'll do that uh, part way through the video. Um, something I'd like to, to, to say that I've said in my last video, which was the big announcement, is that I was getting my new, um, I was getting my new tank. Uh, I still am getting that new tank. It'll just take around three to four months for, for me to get that. But it's the Aqua Reef 395. So it's basically the Aqua Reef 400, but just the newer version. So they've named it 395, which is five liters off the old one, which is it's basically the same, but it just got all the enhanced uh, equipment with it. Um, and I have been hunting down and slowly collecting equipment and supplies that I need for my new tank. And as of the, this past weekend, I went to my LFS, which is the local fish shop, and uh, ended up picking two items that I do need and one item for myself or for this tank which you guys might be able to spot out if you've been watching and you've noticed that some stuff is new to the tank um, I'll uh, I'll touch on that might as well now uh, a few guys that have been watching you might have noticed that there's a different type of pump in this uh, in my aquarium uh, the new pump that I have gotten is a DC pump so it is con fully controllable I'll, uh, I'll see if I can show you the pump. You can see that it is a Jabeo RW8. Let's see down here. <laughs> you can see all the, the little, what it looks like. Comes with the wave maker setting, all your different speeds, your functions, everything like that. There you go. Um, so I'll give you a bit of a close-up view of the actual pump itself. Um, this isn't necessarily a review on the pump, but it is a very excellent pump for the price that you're paying. Uh, these pumps retail from anywhere from $80 to $120 in some places. I ended up picking mine up for a really good deal, um, just because I know the person, uh, that, or my fish shop man, that he, he ended up doing a really good deal for me. Um, so, like I said, you can see the pump, it's very, very, uh, very good. It's quite small, uh, it's a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I was initially going to get the RW4 for this aquarium, but I thought I might as well just buy the bigger vo version and then I can just buy my other one when I need it because I'll be putting it straight onto the new tank. So you can see uh, here that it is pulsing and you can see that my coral is all flowing very well. And see that there's water movement around the entire tank. Uh, it is around eight o'clock at night, so the corals are slightly closed up. This isn't their normal lighting schedule. Uh, the lights are somewhat, uh, or it's basically pitch black right now, or under heavy blues. So the fish aren't exactly accustomed to this, nor is my coral. So they are getting time for bed. Uh, so that's why they would be closed up a little. But uh, I can show you a nice uh, shot of all my coral, which uh, is really seems to be really enjoying this new pump. See if I can get it to focus. There you go. There's my hammer corals, my torch at the back, my bird's nest, which is growing like crazy, my green star polyps, another torch frog spawn slash torch coral down there. You can see my tang. Have a nice shot of my zoas, which uh, I ended up actually fragging uh, another piece or two pieces off a rock. For everyone that has been watching me, I did have another zoa colony rock over where the snail is. 
and uh, s uh, something ended up attacking it. So uh, most likely my hermit crab. So I got, uh, and I only was left really with these little pieces down here. So uh, I didn't have a, a huge variety. I only had this little, these little guys down here left and these little green guys left. So I didn't have the biggest variety of zoas on that rock and it was quite a large rock. So I said, stuff it why not just glue the ones that i have now onto here and let these guys grow over this rock because it's already half filled anyway um so i thought that would have been a better idea which i'm pretty happy with uh ending up doing so the pump is one of the one of the two things i needed for my aquary 395 i will be getting another one of the rw8s and i'll be putting them on either side and having them pulse the thing that I one that one thing that I bought for myself are these coral eye morph morphs. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Um, these corals are extremely, extremely bright and colourful, which I was really happy with. See if I can. So, camera seems to be struggling a bit in this light. All right, doesn't seem to be wanting to focus. There you go. So you can have a good look at those. Uh, they're extremely, extremely red. There you go, that's a nice view. Extremely red, I got three of them and I end up getting a basically a little freebie on the side, which you can see there, which uh, is basically like a little freebie. I'm pretty sure it could be a Recordia mushroom or it could be just another coral eye morph. We can have a nice close up of those corals. They're extremely bright look awesome under the fluorescent lights. Um, and that was basically a, a purchase that I bought for myself because I lacked a bit of red in the tank and I thought that that would make a nice, uh, a nice addition to the tank after I added, uh, after I got these pumps and everything, might as well get a nice piece of coral. Um, for you guys that want to know the coral and stock list, I might as well go over this now before I get onto what I changed in the sump. I have my green bubble tip anemone, which is over here, which my clowns are hosting. Uh, he's absolutely loving the new flow in the tank. Absolutely loving it, going crazy. Um, for you guys that uh, have been watching me, you do, you did, I did have another really big anemone on the side. I did end up fragging that, which is over here. It's already in the two. It's already in the two pieces and uh, it's already healed up in feeding. I'm just waiting. If anyone wants them that's in Brisbane, uh, give me a uh, message on Facebook and I'm sure I'll be able to do a really good deal for you. On the two or even just one of my green star polyps, which are doing great, like I said. They're all new heads. I did have to scrub basically all the old heads off because I did have a lot of green hair algae on them around a month ago, but now they're back in action. Um, there you go, I've got my green tip torch coral, which is doing great. Another head popped up on that one recently. Um, I've got my fluorescent green frog uh, torch coral, sorry. Um, it's doing great. Uh, it's actually a little bit closed up now. It's normally around triple that size. I've got my bird's nest, which you can see over here. Doing absolutely fantastic, growing nearly doubled in size. You can see my purple, uh, my reverse stem hammers coral doing great. Got another bit up there, which you can have a see up there. I've got my mottled frogs uh, hammers coral. Then I've just got my pink hammer. Then I have my uh, torch slash frog spawn doing great. My brain coral, and then my zoas. And of course my uh, uh, coral eye morphs, which I just showed you. Now, what I wanted to touch up on of what I changed in the sump was my biological filtration. Due to me adding the, due to me adding all my fish and coral into my tank, into my new tank when I get it at once, I wanted to make sure I have ample biological filtration for any die off that may happen. Not to say that there will be any die-off because all my live rock is cured and there should be absolutely zero die-off. Everything that has been or that was dead has rotted off. It's been in my tank for a year now. 
so there's no worry about that but just in case there's there was anything uh that may have been hidden in there that i wanted to get rid of i just wanted to be sure um, biological filtration is where beneficial bacteria grows and usually that is served by the purpose of your live rock um, in my new tank i'm going for a very very minimalistic look i'm only going to have really two piles of live rock i'm going to have a taller pile on this side and then a smaller pile on this side or maybe i'll flip that around and that's the general look I'm going for. I'll have all my SPS coral on the top and middle and then all my LPS corals mid-range and then all my uh, softies down bottom. And uh, what I have been using uh, in my tank now has been live rock. Uh, I've been kind of put it on a, a wall of rock which uh, probably was one of the worst things I've done since getting into the hobby, doing a wall of rock. Um, I get very minimal flow in my areas and uh, it probably wasn't the best idea to begin with but everyone learns and I've used all my tools and, and things that I've learned from, from doing it now and I'm going to put it into my new tank. So you can see actually see my fish stock now. So I have four clownfish which I'll show you right now. I've got my two over here. My uh, photon clownfish and then there's two black and whites. I have my Melanaris Ras, which is hiding about at the back. There you go, you can see his head popping out. Then I've got my orange shoulder Tang in there. You can see a video, I did a video on him specifically. Great little fella. So like I said, I had served that by Live Rock and a bit of Marine Pure. Uh, Marine Pure, I will show you in a second, but it basically is Live Rock it does the same thing as live rock, harbors beneficial bacteria, but in a much smaller surface area and uh, area which help you, so you don't have to pack a whole heap of live rock into your sump. You can just add, uh, add some marine pure in there and it will per serve the same purpose, probably even better. So if you can see down here, I've added my marine pure. For you guys that have been following me, I'll see if I, the marine pure kind of stopped at that level it's a bit bright um, but now I basically have a foot of marine pure I have five to six liters of marine pure in here and it was I got three new liters of marine pure and added it to this section so you can see it's quite deep as well it's around nearly a foot deep so you can see I do have quite a lot and uh, it's actually been really good so far I have noticed a lack of diatoms on my sand which you can see I do have a little bit of diatoms or it looks a little bit brownish on my sand. There you go. Looks a little bit brownish, but nothing as bad as it used to be. That's because my overstocking of the fish, but it's looking great now. So you can see that this looks like um, it's actually been helping a lot and it does also help if it's actively run through. Actively run through meaning uh, that water is constantly being pushed through it. As you can see my chiller is always being pushed through it and my overflow is just there so water has to flow through it up and over which also helps. Um, I also have my skimmer in the back which you can see bubbling away and doing its stuff. I've actually been running this skimmer really wet as of recently. So you can see that the cones are almost more than halfway up the neck, the bubble, sorry. Um, and it's been doing a really effective job at getting the nutrients um, along with my refugium and my reactor. Um, so that's the new addition of the Marine Pure. It's been a great help already. Um, I didn't think I would have seen such a result so quick, but it does seem to be, or does seem to have helped out a heap with everything in the tank and uh, I'm very pleased as to, as to what it's been doing. And uh, that reason being, so when I add all my rock and coral into the new tank, if anything does die off, I have ample area for bacteria to grow and populate and take care of that issue before it turns into a, uh, a big problem where it'll be out of my hands. So that's all I really wanted to talk about from my tank uh, on, on an update per on an update stand of view. Um, for you guys, that a couple of people have asked me about my algae issues in my tank, I am practically algae free now. 
Uh, my Some of my rocks were covered in green hair algae. Like I said, my green star polyps were absolutely infested with it. It's completely gone now. This rock where the anemone was, was absolutely infested with it. Is uh, It's completely clean now. And you can actually see my clowns. They are, I believe they are cleaning out a spot for them to lay eggs. Not entirely sure about that. Um, but it does look pretty promising. They've been cleaning that out for around a week now. So uh, I'm a little bit anxious as to see what's happening. You can see that my male is uh, always constantly there, cleaning it, pick, picking out the rock. So it'll be really interesting. Um, back, back to the algae. I did have a lot of algae on this middle column. As you can see, completely gone. Um, I had a lot of algae at the back, all completely gone. And that has been through water changes and keeping a clean tank. I, the only snail on the rocks that I have is this little fella right there. See if I can, it's not, not focusing at all. There you go, that little fella under that polyp, you can have a look there. He is a, some type of turbo snail, but he certainly does the job and he's the only snail that I have. So you don't necessarily need snails to have clean rocks. I always do recommend it. Uh, it helps out a lot, like a tremendous amount if you do have snails, but I do not and I've been traveling fine. Uh, good, good flow also helps a lot. So uh, having this new wave maker in the tank will also help out a lot. Um, with that pump, I'll actually show you over here. Um, what setting I have it on. So if you can see, might be a little bit hard for you to see. Actually probably easier like that. Might be a little bit hard for you guys to see, but I've got it on the third setting. There you go. You see I've got it on speed three, wave one. You got your knob, it's locked setting so that knob doesn't turn and uh, I've been doing it, it's been really good. Um, take, into, take into consideration that I have put a mesh over that actual pump because I have always put that like fly screen mesh over the pump because my anemone does occasionally walk around the tank um, or it, it, they've actually never walked around but just in case they do choose to walk around, I don't want them uh, getting sucked into the pump. Um, so that's all I wanted to go over for this guys. Uh, everything's going great I'll be doing more videos on my bearded dragons birds and uh, everything like that So keep an eye out for those for, for everyone that likes to watch those videos as well I will be updating and uh, updating everyone on those on the new bearded uh, not, not on the new bearded dragons But on the bearded dragons and their progress and the new bird and everything like that So uh, keep your eye out for that and I'll keep you posted on everything